Hey, welcome back. So in an earlier video, I had shown you the mini DSP Open DRC DA8. And what I want to do in this video is continue on showing some of the capabilities of this uh, mini DSP unit. And one of the unique features about this particular model, the Open DRC, is that it offers FIR filtering capability. So um, what I'm going to do is show this um, uh, capability through measurement, through acoustical measurement, and show how you can actually adjust the phase response of your speaker. So let's get started. Okay, so that's just showing you my measurement setup. I have the Dayton Audio measurement mic. It's set up uh, near field to the high frequency of the 12 inch coaxial. And then just to show you again, um, this is the this black box here is the mini DSP that I spoke about and it, the high frequency is being powered by this uh, small little tube amp. Okay, so uh, let's do some measurements. Okay, so what we're going to do is do an acoustical measurement on our high frequency alone. Alright, so I've set up the limits so that we can see here. Um, now the phase is unwrapped and the uh, you can see here the, the phase response if I toggle it off and on uh, of the high frequency um, if we look at it closely okay we have our zero phase um, it's it's uh, showing 70 uh, degrees positive uh, swooping down to around minus 28 degrees and then back up to 32 degrees um, so what we want to do is flatten this so the next step would be to uh, export this frequency response measurement as text. Um, so we're going to do that right now. Just overwrite the file I'd created earlier. Okay, and then we're going to use a program here called Rephase, and we're going to bring in the measurement into Rephase. So over here under the measurement tab, we have import from file. We can pick our measurements and bring it in. Okay, and so you see here we have our solid line is the frequency response and then the dashed line is the uh, phase response. And so um, we're going to generate a file after we make our settings, um, we're going to generate a file that um, the, uh, the mini DSP will be able to use. So um, parametric EQ or parametric phase EQ uh, tab here and we're just going to adjust the phase response to uh, be as flat as we can get it. Um, so I'll just as you can see here as I adjust the slider you can see it makes some some adjustments to the to the phase and we don't want to be too aggressive uh, with it just subtle subtle changes here and there. Um, sometimes it's it doesn't respond the way you think it will so sometimes it just takes a a few tries to to get it quite right um, so we'll try that um, and so when we do this we'll just click generate and and so it's created a file that we can use it like the directory here and then the file name so now if we go to the mini DSP software which is the mini shark 4x8 um, we can go and load the FIR file that we had created using the uh, rephase software. So we're going to browse for the file, and it's the particular file extension is a .bin file for uh, is what the mini DSP uses. So we select that file and we hit open, and it's just confirming that we have received a thousand coefficients. So we click OK, and then we're going to uh, send the bin file to the DSP. So we click on that, and it confirms that that it's occurred. Um, you're not going to see anything uh, in the frequency response because we didn't alter anything there. We were just altering the phase response. So um, we'll leave it um, in place and go back to REW and do another measurement. Okay, so you see it actually had an impact on the phase response. Whether it was better or not is another question. Um, so you can see here, um, if I go 
toggle between the two measurements. Um, it didn't impact the frequency response, but it had an impact on the phase response. So um, we'll continue to tweak it to get it a little bit better. Okay, so if we look at the measurements, we're at still around minus 60 degrees at around 7K. And so if we go back into the rephase, we can select, uh, <clears throat> we can maybe change this to 7,000 and then um, bring it up. And you can see uh, here it's got the plus 38 degrees. Um, so we can go up this to the 60 degrees. It's a bit aggressive. Um, again, like we can just kind of gently, gently make, make the changes. Okay, so then, um, and then for the high frequency, um, we were still 32 degrees positive phase. So, um, and that was at 15 kilohertz. So um, up here, 15, we can change this to 15,000 and then <clears throat> bring it down again a little bit. I'm not sure if that's gonna have an impact or not. Okay, so generate that file, go back into the mini DSP and browse for the file again to reload because it's just overwriting the file and then send to the DSP, do another measurement. Okay, so it's actually making it worse, and that's why I'm finding it's a little bit unpredictable uh, with the results. So um, what we're gonna do is just continue to tweak it is the best I know how. Um, perhaps it doesn't like the aggressive uh, changes that we're trying to make. And um, so I'll just kind of change it around a bit and not make it so aggressive. Um, Try this again. Okay, that actually did uh, quite well. Um, so if we compare the uh, first measurement with no FIR filter, and then going to the second one, we flattened it out uh, fairly well. Um, so again, too, like if we look at the spectrogram uh, of each one, so we can see that it's um, the black line is representing the, the phase uh, response. It's in a different axis. So um, if we compare, I just have to generate the first measurement and show you. So it looks like it's got quite a bit of um, uh, phase irregularity. Um, so going to the FIR one, um, you can see that it's flattened out nicely. And our crossover point is two kilohertz, so we're, we're not too worried about uh, what's going on down here. So, so there you have it. Um, it's pretty neat capability. In terms of uh, the impact on the sound quality, um, I think phase response is uh, one of the reasons why full range single drivers uh, are popular. Um, and I can show you that in the next video.